Good morning and welcome to the Capital Gang. I am Oscar Semoyam Soke. Sorry, we're a little bit late, but we're here. In the studio, I have a, a long-term uh, friend who, when he went away, he was Mr. Now he's a professor of sorts. Let's give him a microphone. Uh, Dr. Dennis De Matanda, professor at the Catholic University of America. So what happened? You know, you used to be very normal like me. And then overnight, bang. Being normal is overrated. Is overrated. Overrated. I don't yes. understand why you want to stay normal, Oscar. I don't uh, understand why you'd want to stay normal. Have you seen Edgar? Do you think he's normal? <laughs> no, no, Edgar is not normal. Mm. <laughs> well, exactly. <laughs> so, most uh, happy to host you on, you. Uh, on, on the Capital Gang this Thank morning. You so much. I also have uh, the only other normal person is uh, uh, Derek Wandera here, who is uh, a young veteran journalist, like how I call Angelo Izama. Uh, but young, 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 young veteran, veteran <laughs> journalist. So he's young but old already. You're most welcome to Gang. Thank you, Oscar. Uh, thank you for having me. Yes. Mm. Edgar Tabaro, specialist in law, farming, regional area most welcome to gang sir oh, thank you so much a pleasure being here uh, uh mr wandera has not done us any good good go to the microphone uh, mr wandera has not done any, uh, done us any good for uganda mm. he's one journalist who understands the affairs in Khartoum, sudan very deeply he did one interview and many other interviews published only one so, <laughs> I'm revealing a secret. You ought to publish the other interviews. That well, I have him here as a, <laughs> a, a, a semi regular. So, on the next time we, we touch Sudan, uh, Sudan, Sudan. Uh, he'll be here. Believe me, he has a depth of, yes. of information about Council, yeah. we are on the gang. Oh, so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mr. Lewis Rubongoya, most welcome to host you on gang. Thank you uh, very much, and a good morning to those listening in to us. Yes, and, and <laughs> of course, uh, Minister Mugara, most welcome to the Capital Gang, Martin. Uh, um, thank I'm, you. I'm pleased you agreed to come. Uh, th 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 thank you, Oscar. Uh, good morning to the viewers, and I'm glad to be seated with my former lecturer. Mm -hmm. of, I think it was constitutional law. Yeah. Uh, uh, oh, Lewis. Yes, Mr. Lewis. Lewis. Uh, Though later, of course, uh, some, some people have been saying bad things about Lewis, so it's it's a good thing to be saying good things about Lewis here. But of course, Congress. later everyone took a different path. So. <laughs> ah, you had to put uh, that uh, in. Lewis is a great resource for for humanity. I thought I would take uh, Martin into NUP, and for some reason he ended up. <laughs> saying, but, but but there is time. The there is yeah. time. Mm. Yeah. Uh, okay. But, uh, Martin, there is time for Vugua to come this side. Not uh, the, Martin is from. Uh, which is the county of Ntoroko. Ntoroko mm. is really NRM terrain. It's NRM terrain. It's NRM terrain. He did not have much choice. I, I don't know. I'll leave that to him. <laughs> no, because, <laughs> of course I had the choice and it's NRM. Yeah. <clears throat> um, so let's start with you, Dr. Dennis Matanda. Uh, you're visiting Uganda as a specialist. And in fact, when I was thinking about the first topic for gang today, I was thinking about you and inviting you. So we in Uganda have passed the Anti-Homosexuality Act. It, it is an act when it is passed? Yeah. Yes, no longer, no longer a bill. It's the law of the land mm. now. Yeah. It's the law of the land, mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, was, was now the fallout with Agoa part of a consequence or was it sliding already? I then there are issues with the World Bank, as, as, as Derek here, the journal, will tell you. I, I think that you have touched on the heart of the matter. Mm. I think that Uganda was sliding towards uh, challenges with the World Bank, with the United States, because it's almost as though the Anti-Homosexual Act uh, capped the aspects around human rights. Mm. I think for me that is, that, that is the heart of the matter. We shouldn't really run around saying, oh, the Anti-Homosexual Act is the thing that, uh, you know, brought all the challenges to Uganda. I think it was the 
tipping point, so to speak. Oh, which was the tipping I think point. It was the tipping point of Uganda's various challenges. If you look at some of the things that the United States cited, it was things like uh, indiscriminate arrests of people, um, people being uh, <clears throat> shot dead, or something like that. And I think that those are some of the things that came up. The Anti Homosexual Act was part of a whole slew of things that uh, came You're up. saying it is an excuse. I beg your pardon. Was sir. it like an excuse? No, no, no. I think it was the tipping point. Exactly yeah. what that is, a tipping point. Mm. It was the thing that broke the camel's back, so to speak. I think mm. that's what happened. Ah, very interesting. And, and also issues to do with World Bank? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I, I, let me put it this way. If Uganda had just passed the Anti-Homosexual Act in the middle of nowhere, there would have been a whole different case. There would have been a whole different system. But let me give you an example. Uganda is one of the first countries that had people with disabilities in, par in, in parliament. Uganda was one of the first countries that had women representatives in parliament. Uganda had alternative, or, or, or sh how shall I put it, women were allowed to go to university with an additional 1.5 points. Mm. That same country cannot be the same country that abuses human rights. Yeah. That same country cannot be the same country that... Um, shall I say, goes out of its way to say we're going to pass a draconian law <laughs> to do X, Y, and Z. In my opinion, Uganda has all sorts of contradictions, and one of them was the Anti-Homosexual Act. Yeah. yeah. And, and the countries that have, not, uh, that have said they are anti-homosexuality, how yeah. come they're not affected in the way Uganda is? I, I, I guess and this, is, this is something that's really interesting. Uganda has not taken advantage of its good relations with people around the world. Uganda hasn't manufactured enough friends in the United States Congress, in the United States private sector. In other words, you need to manufacture friends so they can say, you know what, let us step away and call up somebody in Uganda and say, hey, you guys, why are you doing this? Mm. Same thing with the World Bank, because in my opinion, this is all about communication. Yeah. If you are going to do something that is very popular in your country, don't think you're the only person that knows about it. Mm. From that perspective, if you had forewarned your friends and said, hey, guys, our Ugandan people find this X, Y, and Z very, very popular, we are going to pass X, Y, and Z law. However, you need to prepare for this. They're not going to bring up things like, oh, this is Pacta San Savanda. You are in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in defiance of international law. I think for me that's one of the mm. important aspects. But it's not just Uganda that has lost Agoa. There are other African countries that have yes. lost Agoa. Yes. What exactly have we lost? But you cannot yuxtapose Uganda with Mali, honestly, with <laughs> Chad. Uganda is the pearl of You are saying things Martin you know, Mugara would you, not you say. You cannot necessarily juxtapose it with those two, those, those three or whatever. Mm. <laughs> you know, Uganda has lost a significant amount beyond just the trade provisions around Agoa, beyond the market access provisions around the 6,500 or 6,700 products. What Uganda has lost is a certain signaling effect that Uganda is a normal country that Uganda can work alongside other, the, the community of nations. Mm. So uh, while Agoa is not necessarily, oh, let us, let us say Uganda is going to lose its trade. No, Uganda does only $13 million under Agoa. Oh, that's what it did in 2023, $13 million. Mm. But guess what? That amount of money had grown from 4 or $5 million in 2020. In, 2020, in 2023, if it goes up to 13 million, that is growing exponentially. Mm -hmm. We also have to look at it from this perspective. If you shut down, if you do something like the Anti-Homosexual Act, or if you do uh, human rights violations and things like that, and they kick you out of a goa, you're losing things like <laughs> access to the world's largest markets for interested and disinterested capital. If they threaten you and say we're going to withdraw or we'd reduce the amount of overseas or official development assistance, you have major issues as Uganda. Secondly, U.S. direct investment abroad, which is basically foreign direct investment, it is signaled by things like Agoa. Like Agor. If we want to do something in your country, we can come invest in your country so we actually have a direct market.
back in our country. So American investors might have wanted to invest in this country. And what's very interesting, U.S. direct investment abroad had been growing. It had grown from 76 million in uh, 2020 to about 104 million in 2022. In my opinion, AGOA is not just a market access provision. It's a signaling tool, and we should have been a little more intentional mm. about it. Mm. So you had a week and, and something in Uganda. Who have you met, and what are people saying about AGOA? Are we saying, well, it's only 13 million, you know? In, interestingly, that, that's exactly what I have found. I have found that many <laughs> people do not really understand the mm. essence of AGOA. Should we? Should we understand? Yes, we mm. should. The African Growth and Opportunity Act was an export development program. It is a development program at the heart of the matter. Uh, ironically, it was spearheaded by President Museveni in the COVID-19. Yeah. Yeah. It was yeah. actually his baby. Yeah. And uh, when uh, Clinton... Go to the microphone. When yeah. Clinton led his first uh, uh, delegation into Africa, you remember that yeah. Africa tour? Yeah. That took him to South Africa, I think uh, South came Africa, Uganda. came to Uganda, mm -hmm. Dakar, and Ghana. Uh, it was Museveni's push, him and uh, the late uh, Mayan Jankanji. Uh, the way it's moving the debate away from official development assistance okay. to trade, mm -hmm. uh, opening up more trade uh, or trade access, or opening up access of tradables <coughs> out of Africa. So it's really, well, it's so a, such a long moment. That I, I'm in, so glad in, that Edgar understands this, so you can see what I've been going through. It's, this it's, is the it's, very it's, first it's time, a time I've been here that somebody has actually captured the essence of of of, of, uh, actually, of if, Goa. If you read the communique that mm -hmm. was uh, that was signed between Clinton and President Museveni's mm -hmm. delega and delegation at Nakasero. Yeah. You remember he, he big delegation brought American business, businesses, he, yes. You know, eh? and remember later on Brown, the minister the for commerce, yeah. Uh, he saw did, uh, who died yeah. in a plane yes, crash after that. Crash, yeah. He was also chairman of the Democrats. Yeah. Really, it was such a big watershed eh, in the Uganda American relations. So, yeah. so, so now, I can't believe Dennis, you've been going around uh, uh, officials, and the first time you have. Connecting is on the capital gang with yes, Edgar Tabak. Yes, yes, absolutely. Which brings me to the, the, the heart of the matter. Let, yeah. let's, let's really discuss when you get people and they tell you, yes, we have the Chinese and they can always do everything. Like, I want to say something. Mm. You should never underestimate the power of the United States. Mm. And it's not the United States government. The United States government is less than 25% of the United States economy. 75% of the United States economy is people-to-people, -people, commercial businesses, private sector businesses that have the capacity to give you much more disinterested capital. What disinterested capital is, it's capital that doesn't come looking for profit. It's people you call and say, oh, send me $300. The diaspora guys will send you $300. That's disinterested capital. It is just meant to promote consumption. It's meant to promote expenditure. But there is interested capital. That is... <coughs> American American interested capital is larger than anything China has to provide. What that means is that if we want to invest this money in a profit maximization <coughs> motive, it is also going to generate economic development. Mm. In Finally, for, for, from you, Dennis, I don't know if you know that uh, Honorable Martin Mugara is a minister of tourism. I actually do. You um, actually do. He didn't realize that I knew who he was when yeah. we were shaking hands outside. Yeah. I know who he well, is. Well, big men. We are the ones who are supposed to know them. Is it for for antiquities? You know? <laughs> 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 the nomenclature of that ministry has been changing since 1991. Why are you a player hater? Why are you hating on the man? <laughs> no, no, no. He's, he's a brother. <laughs> we, so, we come from the same sub region. Well, what, what, what would you say to him? Is, uh, how is the tourism industry affected? The tourism sector, you know, mm. I, I am going to say something about the tourism sector. The highest mountain in Uganda is the Kilimanjaro. They have a right to get as many visitors as they can. Rwanda, small as it R is. Renzori. Yeah, Kilimanjaro. Mm. Kilimanjaro is, is, is high. It, it's got all these it's things. It's not so, Uganda. It's not Uganda. Mm. Uganda doesn't have the highest peak. Mm. But guess what, but, Uganda? But it has the highest peak on the equator. Which allows me to say this. Renzori has five snow-capped peaks. Mm. Right? Uganda has more gorillas than Rwanda can master. Uganda or anyone has, can master. Uganda has the world's best weather. And mm. guess what? Uganda is still doing a good job. But Uganda has not been very intentional. 
And if Uganda, if Uganda continues doing what it's doing right now, by ignoring the world's richest, largest, and most discerning consumers, in my opinion, you're doing yourself an injustice. I think we should be very intentional about mm. the United States. Now, I don't want to sit here and promote the United States as bigger than or better than anybody else. But Uganda is a developing country. We now say we are in the middle class. But I think we have a responsibility to be very intentional about attracting foreign direct investment and official development assistance. Okay. Uh, Minister Martin Mugara, you heard from the man. Uh, saying that even in your docket, uh, perhaps there are losses as well. Uh, has, has the departure of Agoa, how is it affecting Uganda, in your opinion? Mm. No, I, I, I've actually silently listened to my colleague. Mm. Uh, uh, first of all, before I say anything, I think I'm Ugandan and a very proud one. And the anti gay bill is representative of the Ugandan society mm. that we represent. It's not the values of the NRM, it's not individual, but it is representative of who the Ugandan people are. So now it's upon us to make a choice as Ugandans. And we are proud ones, really. We are not going to give up our values because a certain country somewhere says, uh, you know, I'll throw out because of a Goa. And they have done this deliberately. If I tell you the intentional deliberate drive that the U.S. has targeting Uganda, even the tourism sector. I wouldn't want to say it on air. It is, it is, I don't want to use the bad word, but I know from where I sit what I'm talking about. It is very, very unfortunate. So I, I want to believe that the issue is actually not the anti gelo per se. Mm. If you look at the U.S. alone, in, in the year 2023, you had around 510 anti gay legislation. Around another 100 and I think 80, 20 22. In total, since 2018, I think they have around 1,000 anti gay laws in the U.S. alone. We only have one as a country. So, so, so the argument of the U.S. is they are just using this, of course, to bog Uganda down. <coughs> we have a president who has stood up to them, who has actually helped the U.S. He has been a big regional player in, 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 uh, in uh, advancing U.S. affairs. I mean, they were hit so terribly in Somalia. He stepped in. So, so he's a regional ally. And, and I think that's what we are saying. That come on, if we are coming on the table, we are coming because we have something to offer. You're not going to sit somewhere and tell us, you know. For instance, if I just say the, the actually the, the U.S. is threatening to 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 sanction Uganda, if you didn't know, for for reasons I don't want to say, because maybe we are buying weapons from elsewhere, and this is in writing, saying if you don't stop working with these other countries, come on, we will, we will sanction Uganda. We're saying it's okay, it's good, go ahead and do it, but we are going to stay proud, Ugandans. We don't care. We'll only negotiate with you if we say. We are going to sit on the same table. And, and I think this is the attitude of this generation. And you're seeing it in West Africa. The problem is, come on, we've had enough. We've taken enough of your shit. Let me use the actual bad word. Hey, 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 don't <laughs> sorry, use sorry, the sorry, sorry. It's okay. still early morning. I, I have, but, but it shows you. Mm. That's why I say there are things I don't want to say that the U.S. is doing. For, for instance, for me, I even believe that what my brother Rubongaya represents as the noob and what Chagulanyi does on the international platforms whenever he goes to get awards and the rest does more damage to this country than the anti gay law. And, and we should also know that there is a difference. That's what Matanda was saying, that the other one was a tip. Yes. There were other things. But mm. What it does is more disastrous to the tourism sector than the anti gay legislation. And, 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 and uh, there are also two things I think we should Which one, Rubongoya or the state? And I'm saying what is principle. That's what I'm, I'm also asking about that, because it is the state that beats him up. No, it's the state uh, that facilitates him to go and do the uh, demolition. Well, second, <laughs> some, some punches. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no, 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 the strategy and the U.S. government policy vis-à-vis -vis the Americans. I want to tell you, for instance, where I sit in the tourism sector. The U.S. is still our biggest source market. If you look at how many Americans came here, despite the deliberate campaigns by the U.S. government, by travel advisories, Uganda is terrible. In the year 2023, 2022, we had around 13,000 Americans visiting this country. Mm. By the time we closed 2023, they had gone 17,000. We believe by the end of this coming year, there will be around maybe 
uh, 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 maybe even 30,000. So we see the numbers growing. And, and, and come on, when they come here, they tell the true story that, come on, what you see out there is actually not the actual representation of what we are told about Uganda. So, so I, I don't want to say what is in a go. I, don't, I think the principle is clear. We are not getting on this table as underdogs. We all have something to offer, and America is not the only country in this world. We are dealing with the Chinese, we are dealing with the Russians, they are supporting us. The Americans have never supported us without conditions. And we are you saying know, enough you know, is enough. Martin, uh, <laughs> yes. Hamas and, and Ukraine <laughs> use that kind of language. Now they 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 they, I, they they said they are coming to the table as equals and what 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 what. Uh, uh, by the way, don't I'm not speaking as government. No no, no. I'm uh, speaking as a Ugandan, mm. as, as 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 Martin. So so I think it's high time that the US knows that <coughs> it's good with your people. I mean, you'll not threaten me. Like I said, this is representative. They have so many anti laws. Why target me? Because uh, so so what? Should I sell? Yeah. Uh, and that's what the president always says. I, I remember when we had COVID. And we had an argument as tourism that come on, you have to relax testing at the airport. You just do instead of the PCR. I said, come on. I know we need the money, but you're not. We're not going to sacrifice life for money. Mm -hmm. So we're not going to sell our sales, so our souls to the devil just because we need the, an American market. I think. The and, and, and now the president and the speaker have said it is those people that are targeting her. I, well, I, I don't go that direction yet. So, 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 so I think we all did this. Mm. We knew there were consequences. Let's face them. And I think we'll get out of them much more stronger and much more independent as a country. Okay. Yes. Uh, uh, Edgar, and, and, mm. and, and maybe as I conclude... Really get out stronger? Yes, yeah, we, do, do, we don't, don't make conclusions we, yet. We, still, we, the we, hour is still young. Yes. Mm. We, we, whenever you're pushed into a corner, you find a way of surviving outside it. You, you can see how we are trying to budget going forward. <laughs> Things will change. We'll find means. We'll find new allies. But there is no way we are going to sacrifice the values of this country because of the market are going the rest. It won't happen. Mm. Edgar, are there any gains in, in uh, what Martin here suggested? Maybe we are cultural gains. We have identified ourselves. We are proud Ugandans. And we are not going to be bullied by Americans and, and whatever else Martin uh, uh, Dennis is saying. You know, I, I, I'm 47 and I keep still young. to my age. Still no, young. Not too young. Mm. Not too young anymore, and not too old. I think I could be a year older than Dennis. I'm actually much older than you, sir. Uh, 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 yeah. Dennis, we are, you are, you we are contemporaries. You were born 76 or 77, <laughs> so you're young. Uh, we're contemporaries, Dennis. When did you leave? Okay. Let's, let's, <laughs> we're let's, contemporaries. Let's, <laughs> let's, let's no, it's, the, it's the first time I'm meeting him physically, <laughs> yeah. but we've been interacting over the years. Mm. I'm still much older than you because I joined in 93. Really? That's when you joined my career? I was doing my all levels then. <laughs> so, I, I, I've learned, you know, over the years. I, 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 I could have taught them both. <laughs> I, 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 sure, sure, Oscar. I, I, I've learned over the years uh, that many things, that uh, many decisions are based on information that is not available to the public. Mm -hmm. So all these simmering tensions you see on the face, Believe me, there are many other considerations underneath. Mm. Uh, the Honorable Mugara, incidentally, we pronounce it Mugara. Mugara. The <laughs> Mugara. The R, R is, uh, uh. that's how we pronounce it in our home area. Mm. Honorable Mugara, I, I, I really salute you. I didn't, uh, I, I don't know people from my home area in Toro who are this bold. Eh? <laughs> and. Uh, <laughs> Although later he retracted and said he's speaking as, <laughs> as Martin Mahiduka, Ugandan, and not yeah. the Ugandan minister. So, uh, and indeed, you mentioned that uh, the aspects of uh, uh, threatened sanctions against the government of Uganda. The truth of the matter is that the Ugandan companies that are associated with Russia that have been sanctioned and officials in those companies have been sanctioned. And in the manner in which America is doing it, the direction is very clear. Now, the question is, what has brought Uganda in such direct collision with the United States? For many years, there was a, uh, you were talking about developing friendships with the mm -hmm. United States. Right? Mm -hmm. There was a very strong Uganda lobby in the United States. Remember all these, uh, you remember the prayer breakfasts that have become now a, a tradition in Uganda, 8th of, uh, of, of October? It's a tra it was a tradition that was started, I think, by uh, I think some members, evangelical members of the Congress. Eh? Mm -hmm. Congress, uh, I, I think the, the what was it called? The Africa, the, the Congressional Black Caucus. Oh, Black Caucus. Eh? 
And you remember how they had very easy access to Uganda? Yes. yes. You remember Uganda AS was a Nile darling. Power? Yes, Uganda was a very serious It was a darling, and yes. you know, it became a... It was a lobby group that yes. if you were if you're involved with 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 the with the, the prayer breakfast, yeah. uh, or Congo or whatever convention or fellowship or whatever they call it, you'd have very easy access to Uganda. And they got remember they got many concessions here for doing yeah. power, energy. But I need to say that. something, Edgar. Mm. You know, Martin, I, I'm I'm going to say this now <laughs> as a very proud Ugandan. There is and I'm not going to sit here and disagree with you. I would like to say, first, you should never, ever negotiate your culture. Mm -hmm. You should never, ever negotiate your, your viability or all those things. But the essence of negotiating something is not about sitting at the table and saying, we are going to do this and you cannot do anything about it. Secondly, you need to understand how rules are made in the United States, how the law is made in the United States. Joe Biden has nothing against Uganda. Mm -hmm. Joe Biden does not dislike Uganda. Joe Biden and his cabinet don't sit there every day thinking, oh, those Ugandans, let's send them back to Azerbaijan. They don't do that. The United States is based on interests. interests. There are particular interests, very small interests. If you get 100,000 signatures, you will get those into some sort of law. In my opinion... But, but you see, then it's why it's a... Uh, they, 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 let's not have an exchange. Uh, an exchange. Let's, let's, uh, yeah. let him, let, let, let him let's finish. Uh, then we have uh, two gentlemen coming. Uh, we'll really, the, the, the point I wanted to make, eh, mm. the point I wanted to make, from a cultural perspective, definitely, when you sit here in Uganda and, mm. and, and there are people who are saying there's no need to legislate on certain, you know, certain... Mm. Persons perceived or, or chosen way of, of of treating their bodies in Uganda it it, it, it comes as a shocker, uh, but from a pers uh, from my perspective uh, with my interactions with persons from the liberal democracies, believe me, there's no debate. You'll never win any debate against minorities. Th th take it from me. You'll mm. never win any debate anywhere in a liberal democracy against minorities. And I think to that extent, to the extent that we went in that trap, given that we already had legislation in existence against unnatural sex, I don't think it was strategic on part of Uganda to go in that direction. We boxed ourselves in a corner, aid is being cut, we're being sabotaged here and there, and we know, you know as well as I do, that we can't fully provide budgeting for our, our 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 revenues can't fully meet our budgetary constraints. They're talking of reducing uh, the parliament, cutting the parliamentary budget by fifty percent. You've seen the knee jerk reaction. Now they are now <laughs> they, 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 they are going to be the, the, the first victims of the very actions that they took. So uh, really, the, the the point I'm making is that when you are legislating, when you are making policies for a country. There are certain strategic objectives. And on many occasions, I've seen President Museveni, when he's pursuing, especially the aspects of regional integration, there are on many occasions where he has taken the stand that we, that hurts us domestically. Remember, right from the word it go in the 1990s, when he was negotiating with the boy and Mukapa to revive the East African community, he refused protectionism yep. for our industry. The Mulwanas, the little Mulwanas of this world, the Ch Kadu Chiveru, stood up to him and said, no, 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 we need to protect our young industry. He refused. So to that extent that we legislated against our wider interests, I, I think was not uh, uh, the best thing to do mm. in the circumstances. Derek Um uh, are, are there, I'm still looking for some positives. <laughs> <laughs> Have there been any gains? Oscar, you remember uh, the conversation we had on yeah. Thursday? Yeah. Uh, we talked about uh, all the misses that we've gotten and the losses. And um, and we had to cross the other side. And I asked you, but are there any gains? And I remember the hysterical laughter that we had on phone. But it's, it's, it's certainly very hard to get, um, to get the gains from the anti-homosexual uh, sexual act. And like uh, the minister has, has, has been saying, apart from us 
patting our backs and 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 feeling proud about ourselves and 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 saying yes we are proud of the kind of culture that we are trying to promote and things like that um i don't see any other gain <clears throat> other than the lo the losses that we've gotten uh you have you have uh, the aids uh aids support cut uh with a prevalence of about uh of 1.6 million Ugandans uh, living with HIV, that that is cut. That support is cut. You have the World Bank cutting, uh, putting conditions on borrowing, and when you look at figures, about 708 eight, uh, US billion had been um, had been borrowed from World Bank by 2020, and you have so many other things and sanctions that are coming therein. <coughs> I think as a country. We, 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 I know this, this wasn't even our first time of attempting to, to, to put up this, this law. Remember in 2015, and as a journalist covering, uh, we know the stories that we've been writing around there. And the threats came even much earlier before the, the, the act was passed by parliament. But the fact that uh, in, 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 in all the speeches of President Seven, you read, his attention turning away very drastically from the west towards the east and stilted much there and he wants to prove a point and i think even when i listen to the minister minister mgara he's mentioning things like china russia and things like that and this time i didn't invite him as minister i invited him as a <laughs> but he's, NRM he's, representative. he's the minister i've, I've moved <laughs> yeah. with the minister i know he died no I've moved with him to the east he's pro doing a lot of good work Wow. Uh, promoting <laughs> Ugandan tourism and domestic tourism. I've moved with him across the country, mm. uh, just covering. But for this particular one, certainly, if the if 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 we've reached a, an extent of saying we need to cut the salaries for MPs, then uh, the, the the rubber has certainly met the tarmac, and 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 now we have to face these cons these consequences, and I don't see probably uh, a recall of this of this law it has affected us i know for sure that for instance last year many of the government mdas suffered budget cuts up to almost the th second uh, third quarter of the year of the financial year many of them could only get money for renting for for the buildings for 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 for, for rent in the buildings that they're, they're having they could not get the, the supply, the money they are supposed to get, and, and, and I know the minister will agree with me on this. And if he, you're he, cutting he, out, he won't admit, but he got salaries, salaries and, time. and rent and things like and that. Are, but but you know, as a ministry, he, he won't, there are so he won't many. Admit, so but many that's that, what he got. That's there. And fuel and the budgets that had been cut at that time, and all this, I don't know whether I don't know to what end Uganda, the Ugandan government can stomach it. You look at if you have an opportunity of, of, of getting credit, and then you just out of the blue uh, close that uh, valve, it certainly comes down to you in terms of budgetary, budgetary allocations and stuff. I know of very many um, uh, agencies, government agencies that are crippling up to today to, 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 to fund their budgets and stuff. Is this something sustainable? In my view, not sustainable as a Ugandan. And certainly we, the 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 were ninety are the ones who are going to suffer is even more um, more of the consequences because you know when money is allocated to you to 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 the government I mean to government agencies and stuff like that it the trickle down effect certainly ends up with a common person if you're passing this law as an MP and you are thinking about yourself who has maybe outlets and inlets of other opportunities for money. And you're not thinking about the person who even put you in that place. How are they going to survive? It's going to be hard. Many a time, President Seven has come out and said, "We don't need that money. We don't need the U.S. We don't need we don't need the the Western uh, region and things like that." But I feel that there is an issue of burying your head in the sand, and you assume that you are not going through any kind of hardships. Mm. Uh, Luis Rubongo, uh, if you think of Martin Mugara's NRM, he says you are you are a bigger problem than even the anti-homosexuality act. I, I think uh, I would take that as a compliment. 
because that's our mission. Our mission is actually to show the world what the NRA regime is truly about. And uh, yeah, with a view of dislodging you out of power, that's our mission, that's what I do every day. I wake up and that's what our president and others do. Because for a very long time they've put you know, some sort of uh, smoke screen. They, they, they want to pretend to be democratic. And so I, I don't think that uh, our goal, and I want to agree with uh, um, the people who said Dr. Dennis, mm. when, he, when he said that uh, the, you know, like the Anti-Homosexuality Act was uh, the, 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 the tip, like the tip mm. of what was going on. Um, because for a very long time we were telling the U.S. and uh, the international community that, look, uh, you need to impose sanctions on Uganda, you need to withdraw aid, you need to stop supporting uh, this system. And our reason is simple, because uh, first of all, you know, the levels of corruption, even involved with uh, all these World Bank projects, AGOA itself, so many, uh, almost every support extended to Uganda, you know what happens. And, uh, you know, now we're talking about the corruption in Parliament and uh, uh, you, you see, so the support being given to Uganda through all these initiatives like AGOA and uh, trade agreements and all that, you know, has not benefited largely the common people of Uganda. That's why uh, our people are still wallowing in poverty and uh, so many problems are happening in this country. So the question was really not in my view about just the anti-homosexuality act, but the, the U.S. government has been, of course, monitoring what has, what has been happening in Uganda. You remember after the 2021 election, they issued a statement where they clearly indicated that the elections were not free, were not fair. And uh, by uh, that, in my view, they were showing that the regime in Kampala is not legitimate. It does not reflect the legitimate will of the people of Uganda. And we actually put them on the defensive. We said, if you say these were not legitimate, if you say they are not here through a free and fair exercise, why, do, why then do you continue to give them money? Why do you continue to support them? Why do you continue... Uh, to, to recognize them even. And of course we saw that uh, the regime has mastered that of blackmail. You know, every time they call them out on uh, human rights violations, they say, oh, we shall go to Russia and China and that kind of thing. The other time, General Seven he said, oh, we shall do, withdraw from Somalia if, if you continue doing this kind of thing. So our, our stand is that, you know, ultimately, we do not see anything wrong with the international community even going harder on the regime. Because in any case, like I said, majority of these projects, you saw after Agoa, um, you know, after Uganda was removed from the Agoa list, uh, people started sharing who the beneficiaries have been. And you could see that most of the, the common people of Uganda, the, these, the, the farmers, people who are exploited every day, do, have not benefited so much as much as people who are connected to the system. And again, I say that uh, people are talking about uh, the World Bank uh, uh, loan freezes and all that, and you, you, could, you can see the same thing. Almost every World Bank-led project in Uganda has been uh, riddled with a lot of corruption um, and mismanagement and that kind of thing. So from our standpoint as NUP, we think things will get better when really Ugandans have a government that truly represents their interests, that will you know, speak the language of the people and ensure that it is the people of Uganda who are benefiting. So, yes, when we go out there, it is our intention to tell people that Uganda is not the best place to go. And the U.S. has uh, released several travel advisories, and the other time there was a business advisory, and you could see the things they are talking about. The state of, uh, and, and I'm sure everyone listening to us knows what they go through, even to register a business. You know, you, you find that almost in every transaction in this country, now some money has to exchange hands. Every time a citizen interacts with government, in any way possible, there will be corruption somewhere. So we need to really deal with the problem, the, the, the grand problem of the day. And uh, I think, uh, uh, no, no, I think yeah. business registration has really improved. It has. It has improved. Uh, I've, I've not and, said and it has not improved. Uh, the red tape has been cut out. Yeah, but mm. the, the point I'm making is, and uh, you are a lawyer like myself, but you know, like I said, what happens in this country, every time a citizen interacts with government, including business registration, by the way, you'll find that there are, sometimes it's not even a government official, it's someone who is uh, trying to do brokerage and all that, uh, taking some money here and there. That has been the experience of most no, of that, that That has greatly and, improved. And, and even, by the way, even if I, you I'm don't... I'm not to say that uh, we, we're not having... Uh, 
corruption when citizens are interacting with the government. But as far as business registration uh, me, and me, business facilitation uh, is let concerned let me, in the government. I, I can say that, mm. you, you know, when you talk about improvement, I think you're talking about the legal aspects. If you, Not if just you the legal aspects. Move to the if, URSB. Even the administrative aspects. Now, Everything is now done online. I'll give an you example. don't have to interact with the human being. I'll give an example. Mm. Just try to get a, a trade license. Even an, a normal one, an ordinary one. And you'll see that yes, there's this money which you'll need to pay officially, but somehow a normal, an ordinary citizen, and I'm sure those listening to me know this for sure, you'll find that someone has part of some money to do this. So, uh, but, but the question of mm. corruption, you don't need to convince anybody. People know what goes on in this country. Mm. If you're buying land or you're doing a, a land transfer or whatever, people know what happens in this country. Investors, uh, to, to an extent, the Genome 7 has now has, had to put a whole unit to deal with the investors' protection. I, I don't know. Uh, you know, every time he sees a problem, he creates an entity. Then the entity many times also becomes corrupt. He creates another one. So to an extent that he has had to form a unit to say that this is uh, to protect investors. Why? Because mm. every time an investor comes to this country, yeah. but there will a be problem. people. So Oscar, in essence, what you yes. So what you're saying, for you and maybe your party, you're not sorry that Agoa has gone. <laughs> You are not sorry that the salaries are being cut. You are not sorry that the government is struggling for money. In essence, that's what you're saying. But like I said, mm. you, you have seen, you've seen what that money has been doing. You, you see, when you say that, for example, that uh, I saw people talking about 50% cuts, proposed pa cuts to parliament. You've seen the corruption that has been going on in that parliament. You know? Money in billions of shillings going on uh, some individuals' accounts. But, but, but Oscar, in what they are calling, yeah, yeah, uh, I'll come back to uh, you. know, uh, uh, corporate social responsibility and all that kind of thing. And there is no accountability. Genom Seven goes to, uh, uh, you, you know, goes to, to where the speaker comes from, and instead of calling her out on uh, these serious allegations, he praises her. To, to to say that you know there is nothing wrong. You can go on and uh, do whatever you're doing. So the, the point I'm making is that as long as the Ugandan citizens are not really benefiting from the money that the international community has been giving to Uganda, as long as projects are riddled uh, with corruption, as long as the, you're talking about foreign direct investment, as long as investors come here and they're just, uh, uh, you, you know, robbed, in, in, uh, for lack of a better word, then we, don't, we, we are not sorry at all. Yeah. Yeah, but, but okay. Oscar, yes, yes, o o Oscar, uh, maybe uh, just, uh, and I don't know why Rwongoa is taking us for fishing expedition here. The question was clear: the gains and the losses of the Anti Homosexuality Act. And I think everyone should know that this was a private member's bill sponsored by the opposition, and we all supported it. And I thought you'd speak to the impact and where they stand. Was this a mister? And, and I've seen the principal going out there, and he never speaks to the bill. And, and like you asked rightly, he's talking about corruption. We can have another d discussion to that, but let's stick to well, the well, no. this week. He, last week he spoke about. It. He said it is foreigners and and people on the, uh, and against the anti homosexual act that they are the ones who are against the speaker. Yes. So, so, so what I was trying to say to, to Rubongwe is that because he's part of the problem. Before you go to these others, that the anti gay uh, uh, legislation has also caused this trouble. But you're part of it, so stop putting. Uh, I mean, I've said that I am proud to be part of the problem. If it means, uh, you know, Uganda being removed off uh, the Agoa list and all that, we have been calling for sanctions. We, and, and so any form of sanctions... Is that why you supported the gay law? That's what you're saying? Uh, no, what I'm saying is... To ease the sanctions? No, no, what I'm saying is this. <laughs> the, and, and I think you're diverting the debate. No. Because the, the question here, the question that has been posed to me, is are you celebrating? Are, are you happy that uh, Uganda is missing out on Agoa and all that? And we say as a party, as a NUP, we have clearly been on record to say that we've been calling for sanctions about human rights violations. This was just not about the anti-gay law. Because if you look at the Central African Republic, you look at Gabon, you look at Niger, these sanctions in these countries, were, in, uh, these countries had not just passed anti-homosexuality laws. It was essentially about the gross violations of human rights in this country including uh, abductions, uh, extrajudicial killings, uh, rigging elections with impunity, and many other aspects uh, of corruption and, and bad governance. So the point I'm making is that, you know, it, it, it's not just limited to the Anti-Homosexuality mm. Act. I think the U.S. and indeed the international community has been responding to the call 
by the people of Uganda to impose sanctions, uh, travel, travel sanctions, uh, travel restrictions, and others. Uh, and, and also maybe to give information. These sanctions did not start with uh, the passage of the Anti-Homosexuality Act. You remember immediately after the 2021 election, uh, the U.S. imposed travel restrictions on many government officials. And, the, you know, there have been several other steps taken by the international community uh, in response to the violations of human rights going on in so, o Oscar, as, as Dennis comes in, I, I think... Uh, Dennis is coming in to conclude the, the topic. Yes, this should be clear to, to mm -hmm. Mr. Rubongwe and maybe the NOP. that you see, the, the sanctions and whatever happens necessarily will not change the regime in this country. The process of changing a regime are well known. It's through an election. So at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. You can create sanctions. There will be more suffering. The regime may stay the same. So who suffers the most? Uh, just in conclusion, who suffers the most is still the Ugandan person. For me, if I speak to my sector, for instance, I am employing directly around 600,000 Ugandans, indirectly 1.5 million. And I am representing one of the most fragile sectors. So, so, so when someone sits there and says, come on, it is okay when Uganda is sanctioned, it will not change the regime. We may stay, but I can assure you that at the end of the day, the person who will be affected is the Ugandan. So, so let's not be that selfish. But, but, but sanctions yeah. have affected, uh, actually, fa sa sanctions affect these regimes more than you can imagine. And uh, we've seen eventually, of course, uh, Mugabe uh, came tumbling down and many others, but we've seen sanctions play a critical role. Uh, so our, our friends has been stopped uh, sponsoring our operation. And this whole idea that uh, some Ugandans are, are benefiting, I think that's what I've been talking about. Ugandans need to benefit, and they will benefit truly when they have a corrupt free government, a government that actually cares about the people. You, you know, uh, people, for example, to be able to benefit from tourism in the true sense of the word, uh, to, to benefit, you know, to, to make sure, you, you see the oil, for example, that, that, that uh, we've been talking about. And NUP has been saying, let the local communities benefit from the oil projects. Let the local communities benefit from tourism. Let the local communities benefit from this. But who are the ultimate beneficiaries? If you go to most of these uh, uh, tourism centers, you'll find that it is the same people who have facilities there, who have this and that. And that is what we are about to change. This is what we want to change so that the common people... I'm going to stop exchange, but only with a final question to you, Martin. Do you, do you recognize what he says about human rights abuses? Because you, you, you jump quickly to accuse him of decampaigning Uganda, but you never look at the reasons they push, they put forward for uh, requesting or seeking these sanctions. Uh, no, of course I see that. And, and that mm. is why we give no money annually to, to make sure they go uh, to hospital. Flies, uh, oh, they go to flies business class. No, 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 flies business class to go and say whatever he has I to say. I thought you were going to say you give him money and, so they can go to hospital. And, and, and come back to Uganda. But even hospital, whatever it is, because we support them. And, and it's, I even think maybe deliberate. But, but what I'm trying to say, and, and when you use Zimbabwe as an example, that come on, at the end of the, and, and I don't know why you, you underestimate the NRM. And I want to tell you, I know we are going to discuss this later. There is no way NUP is going to get to power even in the next 10, 15 years. It's a, it's a fact. And we will go into that discussion. <laughs> I, I want to assure you that Zimbabwe, that is a Zimbabwean people. Mr. Honorable Bugai, you could that, end the coalition with them no, at no, some no, point. No, in it, time. no, it can't happen. That the Zimbabwean people are still suffering <laughs> even, if, even after Mugabe has gone. So, so, so let's not. The officials in all these let, 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 have already spoken like him. <laughs> they, 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 they gentlemen, they gentlemen, let's 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 pause. I, I am here with you. We'll, we'll, we'll let's pause on this uh, Oscar, discussion. Oscar, just, just, a, just a quick one. One thing I've learned over the years, never to say, is never. I, I in South Africa, I schooled in South Africa for my graduate studies, eh? and I remember telling uh, my my friends in the ANC, particularly those ones who had trained in MK. When I'm talking about MK, I mean the MK of... Uh, uh, of, of not Uganda's uh, MK. No, not Uganda's MK. Okay. Because <laughs> uh, this was, was what I trained at Oliver Tambo, Kaweweta. I told them there'll be a time, there'll be a time when the National Party will merge with the ANC. They swore upon their ancestors' graves. <laughs> I mean, it, it happened. It, it happened. So, uh, Honorable Mugara... Uh, the poll. I mean, look at Kenya. The you, coalition. You can. Oh, well, look at look at Uganda. The, the DP and uh, yeah. UPC are now. Uh, and, and actually, you see, and that is what I want to address when we come later. Okay. When we come let's, later. Let's have Dennis. Oscar, I'd like to address that. Mm. That 
the, the lack of compromise, mm. compromise, and compromising positions of our politicians is a big threat to our democracy. Right. Close on this subject, side of the uh, Dennis, where, where should we be going on um, the subject of Agua? First, I, I am so glad that almost everybody at this table, including Martin, Martin, you actually have made my point for me. My point is there is a negative consequence to being cut out of Agua. <laughs> But what's very interesting, so one of the reasons that I came to this country is that I'm serving as an external trade consultant to the Presidential Advisory Committee on Exports and Industrial Development with my... Oh, you're uh, back home. Yes, I'm Odric. back home. I'm back home Odric to is your... <laughs> dealing with my friend Odro Probogo. And, I, and, I, and I'll, I'll say this, that we are going to do everything we can including this conversation on capital gang right now. Right now, many people understand that there is a negative consequence to being cut out of a goa, to being cut out of these global things. So what we are going to spend a bit of time doing is holding global conventions. So we're going to bring a conference to Uganda, something on the Pan-African Congress Business Forum sometime in June. And we are going to spend time talking about the values that Uganda represents to the region, the values that Uganda represents to the continent and the values that Uganda represents to the world. Um, don't be surprised, Martin. I'm going to come to your ministry and say we really want to spend a bit of time asking for support because trade, investment are everything. They are tourism, they are human rights, our country. We cannot underestimate what AGOA means, but most of all, we cannot underestimate what the relations, and I'm going to say again, not what the United States represents, but what the relations with the United States represent. It is of absolute importance for us to understand that. Mm. We cannot say we have China, we have Russia, in exclusion of the United States, because we've had partnerships for a very, very long time. Thank you. Uh, we're going to stop for a break. Uh, after the break, we move on to our next topic of the day. The Capital Gang on 91.3 Capital FM. Capital Gang on 91.3 Capital FM. This is the Capital Gang. Welcome back from the break. I have a young man observing the gang today. His name is Bill Dan Borodi. I'll uh, allow him to say a hello message at the end of the show. Um, recently, I went to Macquarie University last year and attended uh, a talk on Civil War Day. And uh, I was uh, given a, ch a chance to tour the former North Coast uh, in Civil War. You know, as an obby of that place, it was my first time visiting. Uh, I was met by the high command uh, 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 of uh, the hall, so we'll say hello to him at the end. So, uh, welcome to gang. You are not good. Yes. Um, <laughs> I have to get off this show because I'm a Lumumbist. Ay, 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 ay. <laughs> eh. But anyway, let's go. Let's go to 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 to. Let's 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 go to to the reporting, Derek uh, Wanda. So, um, the, the CDF, uh, and I was reminded because on, uh, we put on, on our flyer we said he will be sworn in. The CDFs are not sworn in. No, they, they, they take instruments, they take instruments yes. of power. Mm. So give us a report on, on how that power was taken. Yeah, um, it happened, was it Thursday mm. in, in Gulu? Yeah. Um, and, uh, was there a reason for Gulu? <laughs> it's a yes, I'd know. Yeah. <laughs> but there is certainly a reason. Mm. Uh, the person who um, uh, presided over the, 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 the event is, is, is uh, General Salim Saleh, and we have all known his footprint, footprints in, in, in Gulu and the north. And um, he has, even at some point, like presided there, he, he has a very big. Big, uh, big picture there as 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 a general, and it's important uh, for him and probably the the, the, the the army to to widen uh, the scope, not doing everything from Kampala stuff like that. Probably that could be the reason as to why. But 
what's most interesting about like the the, the change and and and, and the, the fact that the whole event happened in Gulu was I picked from the General Saleh uh, and, and and I hear and listen to his speech and he is <laughs> he's telling um, he's telling General MK uh, things telling him you had gone uh, and you were doing all those things from you know and we said we, we need to bring you back and uh, even ask, says I asked him uh, are you now back for real and he says Yes, I am. But and, and 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 for me, I'm looking at those political uh, undertones and wondering whether there is there is an intention to just try to uh, um, deflate the PLU, uh, probably. And and that was very was, vivid. In the was period. that the reason why Edgar was quick to say he did not mean MK MK of Uganda? <laughs> so <laughs> probably. Are you probably. are you suggesting that the MK movement is is, is closed? And, and when you listen to Geno Saleh, mm. it seems like that's what uh, they're trying, that's what uh, President Museveni and probably the top commanders of the army are trying to do. Because he says, this boy had become something. He was all over and, and doing these, all these things. And then we had to call him and, and, and tell him, man, can you come down? Now we are happy that he's now wearing the, the full uniform. And for me, Oscar, when you look at the, the, the trend of events, in, in the army, how they've been flowing and things. Um, at some point, President Museveni even even like whipped, whipping. You know when you get uh, um, commander land forces, and then demote him and promote him, gave him full general, and then and then dropped him to being an advisor, uh, a presidential advisor, and meant the question that begged was, was that a demotion or promotion? And probably not knowing, it gave uh, uh, General MK legroom to practice as much uh, politics as, as possible. And you could hear it, and you could read all that from the speech of, of, of General Sali. And, 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 and when it comes to a time where, uh, where now you have to put him back into the place of wearing uniform and probably trying to tell him now you 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 cannot practice politics as 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 as, as CDF as you have been doing. Then uh, one will wonder what's the future of PLU and which had spread across the world and some uh, across the country and then recruiting some of the the typical members of PLU into into cabinet. So when you ask me, going to Gulu is it? Is it a political statement? I would actually say yes, because um, there is a lot that uh, President Seven has been trying to to to, 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 to do in, 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 in the north, and that, and government as 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 a whole has been very intentional on going to the north and and trying to dig into the politics there. Mm, thank you, uh, Mr. Wongwea. Well, I think what we're dealing many with discussions, it's, uh, new CDF, yeah. uh, Guru. Uh, uh. I think what we're dealing with is uh, obvious for everyone to see that General Seven years for long been trying to establish a monarchy in this country, uh, family rule, and I think everybody can see that because um, you, 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 Derek. You cannot stand here and say that they are trying to cut the speed of PLU as, as though they wouldn't stop it in any, in, any, in any other way. You know, if General Seven did not want PLU to move to hold an event in Massacre, you know what they would have done? Because that's what they've done to us and to others who try to do events. Uh, they simply issue decrees and say you cannot go to this place. And then what would follow is tear gas, bullets, and, and that kind of thing. You saw when uh, Mama Mbawazi tried to move out to do consultations. He was arrested, humiliated. The rest is history. They've treated, uh, uh, you know, General Tunyafuza the same way, Dr. Tiza Bestia and everyone else. So it, it would be wrong for anyone to suggest that maybe these people did not know what was going on with PLU or they, they thought they needed to stop it in, in this manner. 
Um, someone told me recently that PLU is short form for blunder. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and that if the current uh, the, the NRM, which he described as a National Robbers Movement, has robbed the country, then <laughs> these guys will do National blunder. They, they, they will steal everything. Uh, so the, the point really is that it is very clear to, to everyone that there is a calculated plan. And you know, Genome 7 has been very, very deceptive. He has played politics of deception so well in this country. You know, I was shocked last time when, uh, first of all, he had said that uh, he was opposed to the removal of age limit. He said, you know, <clears throat> and he said this on TV that he would never do that. Then later on, he said that it is the opposition which had provoked them into removing the age limit. Can you imagine that? And then with all the effort they put in, he said, oh, we are not even worried about this. But now that the opposition has started talking about it, they are provoking us. So I'm trying to show you the kind of people who are in charge of the Ugandan state now. So they have mastered the politics of deception. On one hand, like Derek said here, <clears throat> last time when uh, his son was tweeting every day, tweeting against Kenya and all that, he said, no, 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 we cannot allow that. But he promotes him to full general and says, I've recalled you from the position of uh, uh, chief of uh, land forces. So, so you can see, if it was any other person, any other officer doing that, you would uh, probably end up in the court martial, be demoted. So many things would happen to them. The other thing that I, 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 I saw through that, uh, of, uh, and of course the fact that uh, it is General Salim Salihuaz to preside over, you know, the handover and takeover, also shows you um, what we are dealing with. Uh, in terms of, and you remember even at the time when uh, uh, he was being promoted, it is uh, Geno Sale who came and uh, decorated him and that kind of thing. So Ugandans certainly know what is going on in this country. I heard him also say that, uh, talk about Musevenomics and uh, say I've given you different books, including uh, mm. one on Musevenomics, and he said uh, that this is that is what has brought us up to here. And I was like, where has it brought us uh, to this situation where? You know, we are ranked one of the most corrupt uh, countries in the world and, uh, and, and, and all these kinds of uh, problems that we have. Certainly it would be much further if we had, uh, uh, you know, governed ourselves better than that. You know, also at some point, General Museveni, you remember, said that uh, his son is surrounded by self-seekers. You remember that statement? And now those self-seekers, he appoints them to the cabinet. You know, he, he says at one point that he's surrounded by self-seekers, they will sit and talk about it. And now those self-seekers are being appointed to the cabinet. So for me, I think what Uganda needs to see is that all this is uh, clearly being planned. And you remember, uh, I think uh, General Sejusa warned us about this when, he, when he, he wrote a letter which eventually leaked and caused him so many problems, talked about uh, the MK project at the time. And, you know, many people dismissed it, including uh, General Seven himself. He said, that is rubbish. But you can see he has been trying to create different scenarios to build steps towards that. So my call to the people of Uganda is to be alert, to be aware of the, the deception of uh, these people who rule over us, and to prepare to fight for themselves, because if they don't, then nobody will. Honorable hmm. Mugara, <coughs> I, 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 when he said, uh, when one here he said uh, NUP, APLU, people had been uh, recruited into parliament, I thought about you. I, I couldn't work out whether you are MKPLU mm. or all NRM. Mm. I am a patriotic NRM Ugandan. Right. But, but uh, of course... NRM is, is described. Yeah, okay. <laughs> the, 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 the NRM, Lewis, is describing, it's good we share the loot together, we give you part of it. <laughs> and by the way, by the way, by the way, I, I want to thank because NUPA has been filing uh, accountability reports for the 3.5 billion with the with the electoral commission. Can you show a copy with me so I can share on social media? Absolutely, but please, uh, pl I, I, please, please, between maybe I need to because you have not shared it. I, I, but, but you had your time. But, uh, you, but can I give information that he's mm. talking about all the time? The law in this country provides for funding to political parties. NUP is a political party. That money is calculated in accordance with uh, the numerical strength. And NRM has been taking 75% of this money. NUP gets only 12% of this money. We have many more things to show for the funding we get 
than they have for the 40 years they've been in power. You, 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 you just share with me the accountability report so that we can Absolutely. show media. But, but, but you should know that the law in a nutshell is made by the NRM. It, it has the numbers. But let's not go that direction for today. For, for me, I want to congratulate After you. After you've thrown it in, you say we don't <laughs> need to do that. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> no, but he has promised that he will share with me so we can share. Please. No, this is available information. I don't need to share it with it you. It has not been it's available. It's available by the Electoral Commission. It's av- you can write. I can't access it. the Electoral you Commission. Can, no, can no, you no, just no, give no. it to you me? You can write to the EC and they'll You've be been be sharing in Pugas. Can you share with, with me as well? Absolutely. Uh, the, the copies are available at our office. You share with you me. Come and pick Do them. I have to come to. Just share. Okay, but uh, that's another uh, Are yours there? Have you filed an RM? <laughs> yes, we have no problem. Really? Of filing. But for me, I'm not the Secretary General of NRM. I'm asking the one of Nupia, is one before me. But, but uh, for me, I want to congratulate uh, General MK on his appointment as the new CDF. It is well deserving. He will do a good job. As a general, he already qualifies. He's someone with good training. If you look at his CV, I mean, he has trained all over the world. And, and uh, of course, uh, <clears throat> he deserves the position. And, and that's why I keep saying that let's not disadvantage MK because he's a son to, to, to General M7. I mean, it would be very unfair. Let him be given. And, and even when PLU was a, was functional, and, and I still believe it will be, because this is just a patriotic league. I believe even as a leader, he stays patriotic, and he can still maybe perform some of his, of his roles uh, as a CDF. But in that I congratulate him. I wish him the best. And, and uh, you, you see sometimes, uh, you, you know, there's, there's a time I watched uh, my brother Terali somewhere saying... Uh, let me use Uganda. Mm. And, and I remember we had a discussion about it, of course referring to MK then, when uh, Chagulani was doing his tours. And I kept saying, but hopefully everyone in the army is as sober as it can be. Because you see, sometimes w- when you're general, you don't have so many people around you. Who could be overzealous even beyond you <laughs> and misuse power and do even what is unheard of? But, but I want to thank MK that despite this power, and I still believe that, all these insults will go around, and he will still continue to compose to serve this country. The other Ugandans that, 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 of course, will appreciate. And I believe that his vision may be that whatever he was pushing, he, he's still alive. So it could continue, whatever happens after. But I wish him the best, and I want to congratulate mm. him. And I think he's capable, and he's a fit person to do this job. Thank you. Uh, Edgar, when, when, when Samuju was here last week, is the first time we touched on this subject, so he, he, he said it generally was okay. He just didn't like the one who was going to officiate at, at the handover. And uh, he, 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 he was very against uh, that aspect. But then from the General Saleh's t- uh, comments, it seems it was all well planned. Well, uh, Samuju has had his run so, <laughs> with, uh, with uh, General Saleh, yeah. even on this very show. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and uh, if I recall well, mm. Mm. for my memory sounds be right, uh, General Saleh restrained himself from revealing <laughs> what he knew about about, uh, about General about rather Samuju. Mm. So <laughs> I wouldn't like to go in that direction. Uh, for me, uh, uh, first of all. My, my take, my my, t- my job breaking moment uh, in Gulu was uh, the speech that uh, General Saleh gave. It was he was not reading from a written text. No. It was off the cuff, yeah. and he said he had prepared many documents. But the, but most, the most important one is the Musevonomics. Now the statements soon after that are my major takeaway. He said. We need that we have been, uh, we have been what? What were the exact words he used? Bag. We, we have been implementing he had out of uh, all the of this bag. Mm. without understanding. So we need to, and that's why we are here. Now, f- for me, that was laden with a lot of meaning. What is Musevenomics, if I may ask? If General Saleh does not understand what Musevenomics is, how about the rest of us? How about Honorable Mugara, who is occupying the very important position as State Minister for Antiquities? Either I mean well. <laughs> so, is, could that be the... Uh, you know, over the years, President Museveni has been saying, show me who has a vision, and I'll be willing to hand over power. 
And here we have General Saleh, one of his closest cadres and confidants, saying we do not understand what? Musevenomics. So if Saleh does not understand Musevenomics, who of us does understand? Or in any, what is Musevenomics? Uh, because I, I, you introduced me as a, as a lawyer and a, and a farmer. I have interests in three commodity chains. Coffee, which we do as a family. Tea as well. We come from, you know, our tea growing subculture, plantation agriculture in, in Toro. And, and beef, uh, meat exports that I'm involved in with some other, uh, some other uh, business colleagues. So as such, I'm, 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 deeply, uh, I'm deeply affected by whatever Musevenomics is. <laughs> and that's why when uh, Mat or Dr. Matanda was speaking about our goal, uh, the aspects he left out and I didn't want to go deep into it, aspects of funding, particularly social impact uh, funders, equity funders that come out of the United States. We've been approaching them, by the way. And AGOA and all these human rights, uh, uh, so-called human rights uh, cries from the likes of Dr. Rather Professor Lois Rongoj, I've, I've come up and, you know, United States companies are not interested in social impact funding because, one, the things they raise, uh, minorities, abuse of human rights, they keep raising these things. So, uh, Oscar, what is this Musevenomics? Where is that document? We, we need to study it. And what is the significance of Musevenomics at a military, eh? at a military handover, handover. of mm. command? Uh, for me, th that is very critical. And, uh, and uh, General Muhozi was very measured in his statements, very measured. He talked just about the army and said that uh, he's going to give his best. Uh, talked about education oh, of, of the, the of men and officers and men of, of, of the armed forces. He talked about welfare and he talked about equipping. Uh, those are have been works in progress and uh, we know the budget spent for, 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 for the army, for the military, but I also see it improving, uh, going up. But also there are aspects that were never addressed at that occasion. Uganda is deeply involved in the integration of the South African community. And President Museveni has even gone ahead to talk about uh, federation. Uh, he was in Zanzibar with the President Ruto and President Suluhu to pursue the aspect of what? Of federation. And if there's anything that has defined Museveni's struggles right from the time he was a student at uh, the University of Dar es Salaam. The debates that he used to have with the likes of Walter Rodney, um, Professor Shamiarira, Sh Professor Shivji, Professor Peter Kanyuani, in the driving the integration aspect of, of East Africa and the late uh, Mali Munyerere. Uh, President Museveni, in his mind, thinks those debates were academic without thinking about the military. That integration can be best achieved if we have a center of gravity. And that center of gravity can only be driven by the military. That is the essence of Musevenomics, actually. The essence of Musevenomics is institutionalize the country through the most powerful institution you have, which is the military. I can assure you that <coughs> looking... Oh, first, let me say, I'm, I'm going to uh, sign up with Martin. I don't know why we just don't call him Mus, uh, General Kaineru Kaba, because that is his name. It is not MK. I, I, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm just saying that. You know, MK me, is an endearment I, I, term. I, I, I know. But no, no, we're from Toro. <coughs> Either use pet names or endearments. Yes, my name is Aku, Ap Apuli. Oh, Under that's great. Uh, we should have... <laughs> Under the circumstances, <laughs> I understand that. But this is uh, the CDF, mm -hmm. the commander of the Defense Forces is General Muhozi Kainero Gaba. I think there's a certain joy to calling him. I think that we need to almost wash the past of plunder or plu or whatever it was <laughs> that you guys called it. I think we need to wash off from the past. But the essence of Musevenomics, mm. I don't think it was necessarily in the speech that General Saleh gave. I think if you step back and see what the president has done, if you see what Uganda has actually done, 
if you look at many of the major projects, they are happening through the, the military. military. That is the essence of Museveno Museveno Mix. Mix. But the essence of it as well, it is that if people took away the cover, they would understand that the essence of Uganda is being deeply institutionalized through the army. That institutionalization, and if people are not afraid to talk about the national security elements of it, it would actually draw in more foreign direct investment. Because foreign direct investment goes to institutionalized countries, institutionalized entities. The army is a very, very good entity. Now, it brings me to the second part of the essence to talk about Major Gen uh, sorry, General um, Jose Kainero Gava. I think for me it's, it's amazing that our age bet, no, not you, Edgar. Our agement, <laughs> our agement is actually serving in the most powerful institution in the country, which means heavy is the head that wears the crown. the crown. There is a very big chance that this strategic move to get this young man in this position is probably going to benefit the country and benefit his father. Mm. Whether you like it or not, he is a very functional general. He has been institutionalized and... There's also a very big chance that the things that he was doing for the two years that he was out of power, where he was actually really, really, really powerful with his social media following, with his uh, love, we also need to remember what my friend Timothy Kalejira has been saying. He said, what is the difference between Muhose Kaineru Gaba of 2010 and Muhose Kaineru Gaba of 2024? At the end of the day, he has always been the president's son. He has always had all this following around him because people would like to be associated with power. I think for me what's very important is there is an importance of the man now cresting as CDF. What that does for him and for the country okay. is he has to be responsible. Yeah. The, the, so the, the, my sevenomics has been explained. Has been explained, eh? yes. I, I yeah. wanted to expound on it, but... Uh, Doctor is a man of letters, so uh, I'll let it be. <laughs> you let it be. I, 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 I want to ask uh, uh, both uh, Lewis here and, and, and Derek some maybe harder questions. Previously, uh, uh, even though uh, uh, Dennis won't allow us to call him MK, but previously he's been incredibly NUP. So now he has tools. Does that worry NUP? And that's what I wanted to come to. First of all, these good gentlemen who I know are highly educated are telling us that the army is the most important institution and they've repeated it in this country. And I think that speaks to the kind of country we live in. A country you have the parliament, you have the judiciary, you have uh, the executive arm which, uh, under which the army should operate. They are describing it as the most important institution uh, to re-echoing re the words of the person we are discussing now who also described it as the most important. And, and that, that should worry Ugandans. Because uh, the, the military... I was, I, was, I was in relation to regional integration. Oh, yes. Uh, but I, at least I had him clearly saying the, the most important institution. Uh, I, I picked that from your submission as well. And, oh, yes. But really the point I'm making is that we should condemn that. Okay. If, if that is how they view it, that the military is the most important institution in this country, we must condemn it. Because we know that is not the, the military must be subordinate to civilian, civilian authority. authority yeah. And what you see happening now is what has been going on. You see, you, you've seen the role of the military in uh, violating human rights. You've seen the role of the military in our elections, which uh, the, the, the law prohibits in, on, on many occasions. And of course, everyone now has to worry, not only NUP, you know, I, I'm, I'm sure if. Uh, People like Kakwenza, who have written accounts of what they went through under this gentleman, when they hear that now he's in charge of the military, I don't know how they, 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 they think, what, what they will think about. So, it's, 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 and of course, even the Uganda Human Rights Commission, with all its challenges, has always ranked the police and the military as the most violators of human rights in this country. And I don't think the record... That, that record of violating human rights can, imp can improve or can get any better under the present circumstances. Um, the only positive thing about this appointment, in my view again from where I stand, is that if previously he has been operating behind the shadows, now he's clearly in the line. And of course it's a danger for, the, <laughs> for him. Because uh, if he could run out from liability uh, over these human rights violations and all that, now he's right there. He's right there 
and uh, whatever happens, the Ugandans will be watching. When we see the military shooting people on the streets like they, they did in 2020, everyone will know directly who is commanding all these violations mm. uh, uh, that, that are going on um, with, with impunity. And, and very finally, maybe I'll talk about the issue of, uh, you know, the, the question of second guessing uh, the regime and, and, and what its intentions are. For me, I think it is very, very clear and everyone can see it. I don't want us to be here and try to engage in a debate as if we don't know what is going on. You know, the, you, when you say uh, this general is competent, he has earned it, just ask yourself, is he the, the, the best, is he the, the best uh, there has been? What about the others who entered the military at the same time? Of course, even the, uh, the, his entry into the military, as you know, has been largely contested for a very long time. But in terms of the opportunities available to other officers and men, you know, he's now a full general, but you have people who have even played a significant role right from NRA days, mm. still at uh, lower levels, they are colonels, they are brigadier generals, and that kind of thing. You should be able to interrogate all those questions. Okay. And once you understand yeah. why this gentleman has been you know, taken through the ranks to uh, a full general and CDF, then you'll see the intention, the true intention of his father. And I think nobody, by the way, NUP is not intimidated at all. If uh, his son wanted to be a, a president, what he would say is, let us be subjected to a free process. Let there be a free process. Let him put off that uniform. You'd say to who? You'd say to who? <laughs> let the law. Let, let, I, I'll yeah, say yeah. to you and and, and everyone in, in Louis, that system. Please, I want you to stop for a while because I I, I must squeeze in uh, Derek here before we go for a break. And and when you become CDF, do all the past tweets do, will they be deleted and all, all those things? So, <laughs> you know, is, is there an exercise in deleting? Because if I was in Kenya, <laughs> in Nairobi, I would worry about past tweets. I have been to Kenya, and uh, and and when go, you are, go to the microphone, when you are, when you're in Kenya, and you introduce yourself as as a Ugandan, one of the one of the descriptions that will come through is, oh, you are from Uganda, uh, which has that geno, uh, because of those tweets, <laughs> and 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 I've interacted with so many. Kenyans who have uh, their sentiments around uh, the general and things like that. You ask whether uh, the past can be erased. I don't think, because most of the things that were written uh, were tweeted. We have been reporting about them, been reporting the, about them in Daily Monitor and writing stories and stuff. And, and, and it will be hard because it has gone down on record. And whether that um, uh, maybe d d reduces his 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 person his his confidence as a person in that in that position is another debate that we can hold. Mm -hmm. That now you have this very big position and responsibility. <coughs> but do you regret some of the words you've spewed out there? Do you regret some of the things you've done? Probably the general might not even uh, mm -hmm. might might not uh, be in that position of regret. Okay, we stop for the final break, and then when we come back, we again go to NUP. Uh, a tweet I like here from Bill Dan. It says, uh, at same way I'm sick, it says, Do you recognize what Lewis says about human rights violations? At Mugara responds, Of course I see. That is why we give NUP money, money annually for Chagulani to fly around. <laughs> Gang on 91.3 Capital FM. Did you? The Capital Gang on 91.3 Capital FM. Welcome back from the break. Uh, this is the Capital Gang. We are getting to the tail end of the show. And uh, Mr. Rubongwea is now in the hot seat for this section. So, um, in the break, you are saying, uh, Right Honorable Mpuga. Uh, we saw uh, when we had the uh, LOP, leader of opposition, we invited him to bid him farewell and he said uh, NUP knew what they were doing by requesting uh, uh, Honorable Mpuga to, from, to resign from the commission, writing to the speaker, asking him to be taken down from the commission. We all knew it was in futility. Um, and now you, there's a letter out there saying he has been suspended from the presidency. 
Um, so how will all this end? Suspended. Sus- it's been suspended from the presidency, according to that letter. Well, uh, first of all, I think uh, this issue has been uh, blown out of proportions, in, in my view, because, you know, we have uh, things that we stand on as a party, our values, and uh, our promise to the people of Uganda. Uh, in 2021, we had one of the most difficult, most violent elections ever in the history of this country. Ugandans lost lives. Um, people put their lives on the line because of uh, the promise that NUP gave them. And NUP gave them a promise of uh, being accountable, of leading a corruption-free uh, nation, and all these issues. So very sadly, one of our leaders was, uh, you know, uh, found on the wrong side of the law and on uh, the wrong side of morality and our values as a party. And he was uh, requested, you know, before all these steps were taken to step down from that position, apologize to the nation and return the money. And you know what happened after that, he did not uh, do as advised. And uh, the party had to, you know, uh, evoke its procedures Next, uh, asked him to, you know, uh, recall him, essentially from the Parliamentary Commission where we nominated him. And, of course, people have been talking about that letter we wrote. We knew how it was going to be responded to. <laughs> you know, I'm a lawyer. I can read the law and interpret it. And the law, people need to understand that is subject to different interpretations. The statement we were making first and foremost to Parliament was that the Honorable Mpuga no longer represents us on the Parliamentary Commission. There's a reason why political parties like NUP have to nominate. Why, why the Administration of Parliament Act says uh, government will nominate and then the opposition will nominate. So as NUP we had nominated him to represent our values. Not for anything else because when you're, when you're nominated to a position, it means the party has trust in you to represent its values and objectives and that kind of thing. So the reason why we wrote to the Speaker of Parliament withdrawing the mandate, and that's, that, that was very clear in my letter which I signed, withdrawal of mandate to say, look, whatever happens, because tomorrow there could be another scandal, maybe involving billions or whatever. And we don't want people to say, you see, it's NUP, no. We, we, we are basically washing our clean hand to say he no longer represents us in the commission. Uh, and of course, uh, after all this happened, uh, you, you know, we hoped that uh, this senior leader would, would do what leaders in other, in, 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 in really democratic societies do, to say, okay, I've been found on the wrong side, let me step down, and maybe that would, would have proceeded. But when he, he did not, the president invoked his powers under our constitution and suspended him from his position as deputy president of NUP for Central Region. And that is the status as of now. Mm. Uh, Derek Wander, what else could they have done? I think this was, uh, this was the master stroke. I think uh, NUP has kept us at bay for a long time. Um, even uh, just recalling him from the from from the position of commissioner, um, they should have done what they did yesterday, uh, even from the word from the word go, uh, strip him of his position as deputy um, deputy president in charge of in, in charge of central, and and then the others can come can follow. But I've also I've also seen the. A missive or a response from uh, from the Honourable Matthias Impuga, and what he's saying, he's trying to insinuate that uh, probably he's, he's right. Which one, in which language? He, he has he has translated it <laughs> in, in over twelve languages. Language. <laughs> in over twelve languages, so in Uganda. If your language doesn't appear, <laughs> doesn't that appear means you <laughs> and I don't know which kind of statement he's trying to 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 to, 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 to send out. But he's <laughs> he's saying that NUP is under capture. And everything, ev- uh, and, yeah, Doctor Wanika as well, and yeah, captured by Rubongoya. I don't know. <laughs> that is the insinuation. <laughs> Doctor Wanika, <laughs> Doctor Wanika talks of uh, a central executive committee that has uh, stage names for for. for, for it, it was, yeah, it, it was, was, he was making reference to it in a very, he, he was in a very mocking way, and yeah. I was wondering, Doctor Wanika, where was Doctor Wanika? <laughs> <laughs> but Dr. When... Dr. Wanika also <laughs> also knows or doesn't know that NUP has a constitution, uh, a copy to which I've seen and I have, and it's unfortunate that he goes on national TV to mention certain things. Uh, I attended one of the press conferences of the Honorable Matthias Impuga and was saying 
no one can throw me out of Nook because I'm, I'm a founder. And it's also a questionable thing. But there, there is a lot that, that Noop can do uh, in this situation. Because I know for sure in the walls, I've been in the walls of Noop uh, and, and listened to the walls that keep speaking. And I know that Noop has always had, um, has always had issues with, with the Honorable Matthias Impuga. And, and, and they have always kept him at an arm strength. An arm stretch, mm. even giving him the position of president, uh, uh, deputy president, for for instance. I know that there were there were very many voices that came. For instance, even giving him a position of of, of leader of opposition in the first place, there there was a lot of debate around that, and some of them from within, others from outside, and those are things that 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 I I have followed uh, to the letter. Which and are those voices from outside? Or the voices, the voices. Of course, some of them are from the Kingdom of Buganda. Others are coming from That's the a very, Catholic that Church. Is a, that is a key constituency. Absolutely, uh, and but others but are coming I think from. That, 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 that what you're saying is what exactly, you know, kills this argument of witch hunt, because nobody in NUP has been really given most prominent positions like the Honorable Puga leader of opposition, deputy president of Uganda, commissioner of parliament. So anyone who calls it witch hunt, I don't understand them because uh, the, 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 there has been this, a lot this, of resistance. You're, what you're saying, there was resistance, but you still gave yes. him the power. Uh, mm. And all of these positions, he was nominated by the president, uh, the Honorable Chagula, and you sent him Robert. So you know what? You're going to be the lop, despite all the voices which you are saying otherwise. You know. Yeah, so those voices have been there and, mm. and, and, and we've, been, we've been listening and Just, just a, a tongue-in-cheek. So <laughs> did, did NRM learn from this and finally drop some Mabati ministers? <laughs> yeah, of course, they dropped some Mabati ministers. We saw they were both ministers of... Martin, uh, Martin has of, gotten of, his of, pen out <laughs> and he has written some things. <laughs> the, ministers, the, the, the two ministers of Karamoja were dropped. Uh, the state and and the full minister. The ones directly uh, mm. politically responsible. For yeah, who were they politically responsible for that? And yeah, so the Honourable Matthias Impuga has had these issues for some long time. Okay, they, they, let's take microphone to Dennis Matano, who technically shouldn't be saying anything because he comes from Trump country. I don't know if you uh, uh, are allowed to say anything. He does. <laughs> It does. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the politics of the DFV Yeah, the, <laughs> these, these things. It's in my America. opinion. It's my opinion. Wait, I'm, I'm looking at you. I'm like, yes, that is the truth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I guess for me, I have just. I, I I want a specific question so I can answer it as best as I possibly as can. As best as you can. Mm -hmm. So what else could NUP have done? First. I think we need to recognize and admire what NUP has become in such a short time. Mm. I absolutely have so much respect for somebody who started out as an artist and look at him right now. That, in my opinion, is a significant amount of power. Mm. Secondly, I think that we need to see what they could have done. I mean, with, uh, with uh, the Honorable Mpuga, I mean, they could have done so many things. But I think that the essence of what they're doing right now is... No, let me put it from the way I would have done it if I was in uh, the Honorable uh, Bobby Wine's position. I would have actually cut him at the feet and at the legs, just cut him off completely. Mm. But the fact that they're taking it through the system, this is somebody who has been disrespectful to the party or is doing things inimical to the party or inimical to the party's constitution or whatever it is he's doing. He seems to be a spy. He seems to be all, all these things here. I think, <laughs> yeah. I mean, he, 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 there, there, there are very many things. I, I don't we're, know. We're talking I, I, about the <laughs> Yes, I know that. I'm just saying, he seems to be <laughs> the all you these things. <laughs> It seems to be all these things uh, that are uh, not... Uh, uh, Dr. Matanda truly lives in the United States. <laughs> why? <laughs> why? But why are you player hating? <laughs> I will just ultimately say that if there was something I could have done, and that yeah, was the... That's the, what you would have that, done. That's what I would, I would have done. I would have basically taken him out of parliament. Mm -hmm. Now, I understand that they're not going to take him out of, of parliament. However, I would have done everything I can to make sure that he has no power anymore because the power is with the president of the party who is not in parliament. I think that under the circumstances, anybody that is looking at Noop, not as a young party, but as Uganda's second strongest party right now, 
would understand mm. what the presidency of that party is doing to make sure that there is nobody who is inimical to its objectives. Yeah. Edgar, uh, it, I'm going to practice this question on you because I, I, I'm saving it for Martin Mugara here. The politician. The, the politician, <laughs> you know? Because he said our values, our nation, whatever. Do you think people should be blamed for having a value of doing right? I, I don't get you. That the slack they've taken for seemingly doing the right thing, uh, is that correct? Is that our value? I mean... People were in, in an uproar over Mavati. But now people are in an uproar for people, NUP, who have said someone you know, took I, money. I, I, I made it. an opinion on, on this subject. Uh, you called me to the mm. show, and when he had been dropped as leader of the opposition, mm. I, I, I made my opinion. Mm. And I remember you uh, teasingly saying that we have a similar background. <laughs> he, he served as a minister in Buganda Kingdom. Mm. I served as a minister in Toro Kingdom. Yeah. Uh, he's, uh, he's a lawyer, and so am I. And uh, I see Mpuga more of uh, a, leader, a leader who represents very critical constituencies, Buganda and the Catholic Church. I also see him as one who can bring about consensus. If we are to have, if we are to have uh, polariza polarization of, uh, of, of, of 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 politics in Uganda, uh, I did make an opinion on the monies that were allocated to him as uh, as uh, as uh, as. Uh, as uh, it was a commissioner leader of the opposition. It was a leader of the opposition, and I think where can I fault Impuga? is that he did not recuse himself from participating in that decision. At his level, I call it indiscretion. He could have stayed away from that, that very discussion. And I, I've, I've put it to him by the I've, 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 I've reached him out and I said, I said, Honorable Mpuga, you should have recused yourself from that discussion and let the decision be taken by others. But it's an institutional and, and, decision. And consequently, stop writing in different languages. Uh, uh, well, well, well. <laughs> 12 different languages. 12 di <laughs> I was waiting for one in my own mother tongue, but I, have, I, I don't know. Maybe Honorable Lewis Ongoya will, will craft it for him. I'm meant to understand you speak my language too. So <laughs> I hope you, you craft him that in mm. my language for the benefit of my people. But... Uh, 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 the jokes aside, uh, we are less than two years away to the next election. 81% of the electorate, the registered voters, will be aged between 18 and 30. Last year, when did you stop your tours uh, in the country, the offices you're opening? Last year, indeed. Uh, at some point last year. Uh, October, November. September. September. Yeah. Uh, when I looked at the, the crowd the Lewis's drew, wherever they went, I couldn't really sit back and say, man, these are the other, you know, we used to call them boys, but they've striven for mastery. We can't call them boys anymore. And, and you know, I mean, when Lewis said, eh? I think they've managed to build a political party from scratch. Leave these insinuations of the Abed de Buanicas, eh? calling them by their stage names, New, eh? is it <laughs> Nubian Lee and what have you, in a mocking manner. And the fact that they could even attract people like Dr. Abed Buanica to the party shows that uh, these boys are not to be taken. And I said boys, I'm using it in a daring yeah. manner, not mm. in a condescending manner. They are not to be taken lightly anymore. If there are aspects, if there are issues that do affect them, we need to attend to them. And to the, f uh, the fact that they've claimed well, the moral they, high ground. They, 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 you remember what they said, if you've not come to the ghetto, let uh, them bring the ghetto to you. Uh, yeah, but you, you remember on Rebokatu to make it get very clear mm. here. And mm. actually on off air he said more. He said, guys, whether we want it or not, the ghetto is going to come right in our boardrooms, whether we want it or not. 
So it's, this is the time for the likes of Honorable Mugara, the ones who sit in air-conditioned offices, driving air-conditioned cars, to go and stay in air-conditioned hotels, with their, with their driver. to make decisions for us. <laughs> this is the time for them to think very, very critically, very critically and design the policies that address that crowd. Less of that, believe me, you're going to have a constant headache, and 2026 is not going to be a walkover like it was in the past. Honorable Mugara. But it's very unfair from uh, my brother here to say that I think all members of parliament and the rest are uh, beneficiaries of this. There's even SC here. Really. <laughs> <laughs> no, you, you, you're the one most proximate to me now. Yeah, at the moment. At the moment. I'm sure it could be Rubo Goya's office. And, 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 and your and, one cabinet and, minister can very easily reach. Indeed. Through, through family, through indeed. friends. Uh, the others have put us, themselves out of our reach. Yes, yes. <laughs> But anyway, and, and and remember, he's the minister we regularly invite here on gang as an NRA member, not just like as a minister. Mm. Mm. Th th thank you, Oscar. First of all, I because I, I followed a bit. It's unfortunate for my brother and Puga, as with him in the ninth parliament. I think we're all independents, and and i've made this i mean this argument before and i have told even mpoga even and mpoga is the first fallout i have to tell you that quite a number of people that have the spine to stand up for themselves will leave the nope because it's a cult there is no person with values will stay in that party it is impossible <laughs> i can bet here i, I had not seen where you're no, going oscar, <laughs> oscar i can place a bit here because it is just uh, place it ten thousand. No, no. I'll, I'll trust me. Any other time, you'll call me. By the time no. we finish, trust me. All the members I'm, of I'm parliament. I'm also going to put down ten thousand. Yes. So pe people trust are going to take money and leave no, a, in UP. Of so. course, they will. there is no way you can be in that cult based on a a, a principle. Not mm. even noop. There is nothing like uh, noop uh, in existence. It's uh, one individual. And and also, I salute him. Really, transformation from. Uh, get uh, off. From from where he is to what he is, but now we should know that he now needs to transform from the artist who takes all the limelight now to a politician who works as a team mm. to grow a party. Now that you've and gotten all of that out, what could they have done yes, about uh, the five hundred uh, million and so on and the decision and so on? Uh, uh, and that's where I'm getting. And, okay. and this is why I say, because now, if you look at the the, the, the committee in charge of the the structure in charge of the welfare <laughs> of Parliament is the Commission. So whether Mpoga participated or not, that was the only institution that would uh, appropriate these, these amounts of money. Mm. Otherwise, because they're all benefactors. So either there would be no meeting or there would be a meeting. And Mpoga had to be part of it, like any other. So, so there is no other way of, 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 of doing this. But beyond it, for me, I want to say it is witch hunt. But, but I'll conclude with that. The, the interesting bit is how now the NOOP reacted. Because, I, first of all, I saw a letter from the... The former vice, eh, Adriga, I think she's the leader, Lena Zandrilina. Uh, and she wrote to Mpuga saying, I am giving you notice for you to explain to me why I should not recall you from parliament as a commissioner. Uh, the second came from uh, my brother here, senior counsel, by the way, because I know he's one of the brilliant lawyers I know, writing to the speaker saying that, uh, and he quotes the law in which, uh, in which, uh, um, in which uh, Matthias Simpoga had been appointed under the under the rules of procedure as commissioner, but he does not speak to any any clauses of the of the removal of, of the removal at all. And, and that's what I was saying because the process is well known; it is laid out. I don't know what you expected the speaker to do to move a motion on your behalf uh, to, mm. to, to mobilize the, the the 177 members of parliament so you can move. So so either. And, and I still believe, by the way, that stop taking Ugandans for right. You can still mobilize members of parliament, raise a motion, and remove Mpuga. And, and, and not go so through... The, the plenary? Of course, that's the... <laughs> yes, but, but, but you cannot... Because I wanted, uh, and I wanted <laughs> to ask him, what did he want to achieve by, by writing? Maybe you'll answer. Uh, I think I already but, did, but, but, and I but, can also explain the oh, aspects the, the, of the... Let him okay. finish, and I come to you, because so, so limited so, time. So, so mm. the, the biggest challenge the NOOP has is... is I've seen the, 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 the suggested amendments in their constitution, and they are saying that the, the party president can only be president for two terms. 
and thereafter there would be a new one. And and what they are doing now is deliberate, just like the FDC. Of course, FDC was a little bit shabbier, but these ones are a little bit more deliberate. They are going to put out any other competition beyond the two terms, in that either Chagulani continues his reign, or maybe another person... So from, from where are they learning these things? From where? I don't know. <laughs> I, 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 I know from where I came from, so I don't know if it's just... <laughs> <laughs> but, 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 but to be honest, it is unfortunate that, that uh, Mother Simpubuga is getting this buttering that is getting from no. But I want okay. to tell you, it is beyond the money. They have always not wanted these intellectuals there. They are going to make sure they all live. They continue all managing their party. And, 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 and uh, yes, from the political divide, the ones who have been in, in politics. Because they are, of course, it will be. The intellectual is here. L like I told you, the principal, just uh, like any other artist, okay. the, the handbook is the same. <laughs> The light should only stay on him. But but I want to assure you, Rubongoya, mm. that, that uh, of course, try your best as well. Because I don't think, if you don't have these leaders, there is no one who is okay. surviving beyond Chagula. Thank you. Simple. Louis Bongoya. Well, <laughs> it, it's uh, crazy listening to the thoughts of this, my brother. First of all, it's not true that uh, the Parliamentary Commission uh, is, is the one that even... Sub the Supreme Court has pronounced itself on this matter to say that, uh, you know, there has to be a bill generated by the executive to parliament, which was never done. So you have a parliamentary commission sitting, uh, you know, to say that let us distribute, let us allocate money to ourselves. You know, let us thank ourselves because a service award means, oh, we are the, the finance committee and rules committee after. You, first of all, it did not go through all those procedures. You know, initially, we even thought that it had gone to the committee on, 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 on rules, the legal committee in particular. And eventually it turned out that it, it, it had not even gone there. So. But, but most importantly, what does the law say about conflict of interest? That you sit, and like uh, Council Tavaro said here, that you sit in a meeting and you say, we deserve an award. You remember the uproar in this country about the, uh, you know that time when there was a handshake, the, fam the famous or infamous handshake of six billion, where for, for the two government officials were given six billion shillings. F and for them, they even had a justification because they went and participated in an arbitration in London and but, came and but, said, you but, know, we deserve but, 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 If your issue is corruption, but can you please us, share? Can you please share us, the 3.5 billion see, accountability that, that, here? What, uh, that, that, uh, For me, I still don't divert me now. <laughs> you see, that's why the problem is that, uh, one, there was conflict of interest. Uh, the, the person who presented a report in, with regard to the handshake at the time was uh, Honorable Anita Monk, now who is uh, the Speaker of Parliament presiding over the same thing that she was uh, against. They are talking about Honorable Mpuga representing a very, you know, you know these uh, constituencies. First of all, I want to say that this is not a political issue. And uh, people have tried to make it political. This is a question of corruption and abuse of office that we are trying to deal with. The constituencies that uh, you're talking about, you know, I mean, even if our president was, was a northerner or whatever, it would not matter. But you're talking about... You're talking about this matter as if our president comes from a different region or religion or whatever. I don't understand. Are you saying that? Uh, so, so that argument has been crafted mm. very wrongly. And what, I think what, what would you say about Senyo so, now? So, now, <laughs> I, I want to. Yeah. If if I can, uh, you know, quickly, quickly mm. uh, respond to some of these things. Do we are He's saying out that NUP is, is, is a mm. cult. I don't know what uh, how I would describe NRM then. If you say NUP is a cult, then. I think NRM would be described as a criminal enterprise. You see, he's here second guessing. They don't know what is going on. They don't know whether it is MK or Genome 7 coming. They are always trying to imagine, and, and uh, whichever, mm. wherever the wind takes them, that's where they go. But the point is that we are dealing with corruption, and uh, we have followed all the rules. And, you know, uh, I want to believe that uh, wh wh they have been talking about the question why did you write the speaker? I've already explained that the issue of writing the speaker, withdrawing our mandate. But also, we firmly believe that there are different routes of removing someone that the party has nominated. No, they are all lawful. For example, you are a minister here. You may be censured by parliament, but the president can recall you tomorrow. There are two different routes. In our view, and, and maybe we shall seek interpretation of courts and that kind of thing, we believe that there's one rule, route for removal through parliament, members of parliament, that, that procedure that, that you're talking about, but you also believe that since we nominated him to represent the interests of the opposition, if such a person no longer represents the interests of the opposition, we should have the right 
to recall such a person. Dr. Uh, Dennis Matanda, I will not allow these two gentlemen to have final word on gang. Let me <laughs> request that you have final word on gang. Conclude the show. I just wanted to say thank you so much. It is such a great pleasure to come back home and find that you're still in a coterie of brothers and sisters who actually can actually debate the issues of the land. And I think that we need to remember that Uganda is the power of Africa. Well said. Uh, thank you so much, Star Cafe, for powering the gang. Uh, performance hasn't been very good on the table, uh, on gang. Uh, thank you, Mr. Louis Rongoya, for your debates, uh, especially with Honorable Martin Mogara, Minister. Uh, Edgar Tabaro, thank you so much for comments. I'm so <laughs> uh, uh, Dennis, uh, thank Dr. Dennis Matanda, thank you so much. For, for 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 contribution on gang and telling us Agoa is important. Someone asked me, uh, by the way, how much money is it? And I told them that you already said it's 13 million from 4 million. Thank you. Uh, young veteran journalist. Uh, <laughs> 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 yes. Uh, but Oscar, Oscar, thank you for calling us here. I, I yeah. meet Dennis for the very first for time. For the first time, time, yeah. But we've been interacting since the 90s. So. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yes. So uh, a tweet by, Aven, I'll get the name, it says uh, uh, NUP gets money from iPod and uh, Rubongoya says, yeah, that they don't. don't. Thank you so much. I am Oscar Semwe. I'm so okay. I'd like to wish you a happy Easter. And I shall see you next week.